Good morning, fellow cardio vloggers. Well, fellow cardio members. Cardio X. Is that a thing? I don't know. I think we should come up with a cool name like Awesomers or something. I don't know. Cardo Maniacs. That's my bad Hogan impression. <laughs> Again. So I hope everybody had a great Sunday. Hope you enjoyed um, Donald Trump bobblehead's announcement of the winners. I will not approve uh, comments on that. I do see them though. And um, congratulations to all of the victors, the six victors. Hopefully we're gonna have that again this next Sunday. And I'm planning on another special guest this Sunday. So hopefully a little more fun to be had with our winter selections. But please remember, let's get started with this right off the bat. Please remember that to participate in the trivia challenges here on the Cardio Blogs, you must, number one, be a subscriber. Number two, like the video. Number three, and I will, before we go to number three, you must like the video in which you are actually leaving the trivia challenge answer. And number three, you must leave a comment below with the answer to the trivia challenge. Easy peasy. I can't remember the rest of that. <laughs> anyway, easy peasy. All right, so today's trivia challenge is gonna be a fun one. And as we get closer and closer to the election here in the United States for president, there's a lot to consider. Um, but one of the things that's really important to Americans is privacy. And we've had a lot of violations of privacy uh, recently. I was originally hoping to see the woods on Saturday, uh, but I ended up seeing uh, the Snowden film directed by Oliver Stone. I've already talked about this, but what was really fun or interesting to me is that the Snowden film really in a lot of ways takes its, um, its bow from a documentary done by a filmmaker named Laura Poitras, um, who shot a film called Citizen Four, which is how she was originally contacted by Edward Snowden, beginning this process of revealing that the NSA and the CIA had blanket um, ability to access all Americans, not just suspected terrorist threats or suspected affiliations to terrorists, but to all Americans to access their emails, phones, all the like. And it's very scary to a lot of people. Um, you may not think you have anything to hide, but even just your own freedom of speech becomes something that they can use against you if you, and we are getting to that point, where if you disagree with a politician that's currently in a high level of government, you could be detained, incarcerated, the whole thing. So it's a scary time. So, Citizen Four, I actually liked a little bit more than the Snowden film, even though I think it was strong. Thinking about doing a review for those, putting them up separately. 
I'm also thinking about doing another program uh, called Word of the Day, where we, uh, where I sort of give one vocabulary a word, vocabulary, I can't say it, vocabulary word a day, and synonyms and antonyms for it. So, I haven't decided whether to do that, but if I do it, I probably will launch it until next year. But I think it would be a fun sh little show. It wouldn't be the same spirit as this one. But I think it would lead, lead more people, uh, potentially, to these vlogs that we do. And hopefully offer more knowledge and entertainment to people, which is my goal. So, we are about to hit fall here in the United States. By that measure, it's supposed to be Thursday, but we still have 90 degree temperatures expected <laughs> here through, through the end of the week. So, it's gonna be a little challenging temperature-wise for some of us. We'll be rushing to our air conditioning. As a matter of fact, I've had a, a little bit of an issue with Amazon recently. Because I've ordered some products through Amazon and if you're not aware of this Amazon is trying to become more self-sustaining meaning that they don't use um, carriers like UPS or uh, FedEx or the post office to deliver their packages but instead they have their own warehouse and own delivery people. Well, here where I live, the delivery people they have selected are either lazy or incompetent because they have not been delivering packages to people's doors. Instead, they have been dropping them by the mail room in the office, not even telling the office personnel that they've left them there. And then they make off like a rabbit. And two days in a row, I've had notices from Amazon Let's say your package has arrived or was delivered and was left by the mailroom. But when I've gone to the office to find them, they weren't there. Which means one of two things. Either they were stolen or they delivered them to the wrong address. But either way, they're not succeeding with this trial right now. And when you pay the Amazon Prime membership to get these perks of two to three day delivery, and they do not follow through with their end of the bargain, it looks bad on Amazon, even though Amazon you know, in the overall, does a pretty solid job. If you don't hire strong people locally to handle your business, it reflects negatively, negatively on you. And it opens up the opportunity for another company to seize that benefit and to seize that business. So I gave him a pretty big earful yesterday about it because I told the people, the person I was talking to, that I, um, that I, you know, wanted, I didn't want a refund because that was her reaction was like an issue you were refund and you can reorder it. I said, I don't want to reorder it. I want my package. 
Do you, you, a refund is not an option for me. I want the package. Do you read me? My top of impression. Mission Impossible. As a matter of fact, did you hear that he's uh, gonna do a sixth Mission Impossible film? Tom Cruise is 54 years old now, and he still does a lot of his own stunts. I think that's pretty awesome. I'm not a big fan of Scientology, but I think that's really pretty impressive that he does that, his own stunts. So here is today's trivia question. <clears throat> Who discovered that Brazil and the West Indies were not the outer reaches of Asia, but were in fact a part of a new world? And how do we remember that person today? So, I uh, have been thinking about all this stuff with um, politics. Yesterday, if you, um, well, not yesterday, but Saturday evening, we had a horrible thing happened um, in several different places. Um, two bombs went off in New York. One near a rally for military, and one at a dumpster. Uh, the last number I heard was 29 were injured, but they've all been released now. One that occurred in New Jersey, and a stabbing at a mall. I want to say it was Minnesota, but I can't remember. But um, where someone was stabbing people. So this has been sort of buried in the press, unfortunately. Um, I guess before I get into that, I should sort of tell you an interesting statistic, which I still believe is a little higher than it actually is. But one of the latest Gallup polls, I worked very briefly for Gallup, by the way, very briefly because I suck at it. But, um, because back in my youth, I couldn't handle rejection or hang-ups very well. So, it really, my skin wasn't very thick. And so, I couldn't handle people yelling at me over the phone. They were like, don't bother me! Or people who were just like, I don't want to help you. And just <laughs> hang up. Some people were made for that either in their youth or later in life. I was not made for that. <laughs> but um, a recent Gallup poll that asked people what their faith percentage was in the media, how honest they thought the media was, 31% thought the media was honest. And the rest had either some trust are very little trust in the mainstream media. So what I'm leading up to with that is after these bombings and stabbing occurred, it did not, the mainstream media would not release that there were any ties to foreign terrorists, um, meaning that Either the people who committed it were members of ISIS by having been in foreign lands and come here, or if they simply were people who adopted the ideology of ISIS's members. But one came out on Tumblr and said, I am the New York City bomber. Um, ISIS groups online uh, celebrated the actions and the person who was stabbing people in a mall the story goes from witnesses that he was walking up to people asking if they were Muslim 
And if they said they were not, he stabbed them. So, I want you to remember that we talked about the significance of these things and what can happen from the president's perspective if he feels that there is civil or foreign wars breaking out. I want you to remember that. I also don't want you to turn to hate against people who are from different countries or people who are police officers because there's good and bad in everyone. You just have to keep your eyes open and not believe everything that you hear from the mainstream. Here's another good example. ABC did a live coverage of Hillary Clinton answering questions about what happened in New York. And she said that she had been briefed on the bombings in New York. And then she was asked what she thought about Donald Trump saying that they were bombs before uh, a rally he was at. And she said that she thought it was very important not to jump to conclusions and to wait for all the facts. So in one breath, within a matter of like 30 or 40 seconds, she went from saying it was bombings to saying we don't have to jump to that conclusion yet. And the mainstream media outside of that live broadcast criticized Trump for calling it a bombing, them bombings without evidence. So there is favoritism within the media. So in other words, if you want to decide if Donald Trump is a racist or a bigot or a xenophobe or whatever, at least do the research on your own. And if you determine that you believe he is, that's fine. But don't just believe what they tell you because what anybody tells you, what I tell you, what anybody's. Mine's a perspective and I think it's very scary. There is something that's been established in polls that have come out about Trump and Hillary um, that Trump is moving ahead now. He was behind. He's been moving ahead. And he's been moving, moving ahead in spite of the fact that they've actually been polling more Democrats than Republicans or Independents in the polls. And yet he's still leading. Which brings major newspapers like the New York Times, Washington Post, who has a thing on their front page sometimes that says the likelihood of Hillary winning was 95%, 87%, and it keeps going down. And there is a very solid likelihood that if Trump handles the debates well, that he will have so much dominance. The LA Times, in fact, um, said that Trump has moved ahead with African-American supporters. He was at 1.3%, and now by polling, and remember, polling is only a representation of the population in an area. It's not everyone. It's usually, well, there's a, there's, a, there's a variety of options, but anywhere from 100 up is usually how they poll to make their decisions. And he's gone from 3% up to almost 20%. So he's definitely gaining support. Here where I live, yesterday, there were two Latino uh, rallies or hosted by Latino groups, rallies, hosted by Latino groups that support Trump. So he is gaining. And I guess what I want you to do more than anything, what I would encourage you to do and hope you will do in making your decisions, whether you're of age to vote now or not, is to go and research information. So if someone says, Donald Trump is a xenophobe, 
go look up and find out why he's considered a xenophobe. What led them to that belief outside of his statements about curtailing uh, refugees being sent to America right now until we can properly vet them, which is just reason. That's not against a race of people. That's saying we need to make sure that we're not getting those who mean us more harm or building a wall. So you understand, in Mexico, at the border, people can walk across the border of Mexico into the United States and not have any, we, there are some that are deported, but it's like 0.5%. And if you walk across from the United States into Mexico, they will tell you to turn around and leave because they have more control of their side of the border than we are holding. And that's dangerous. There's a quote from Reagan that said, a country without borders is not a country. And it's true. It's not that we shouldn't have more people in here. I do believe personally that we need to suspend immigration indefinitely right now until we get a higher level of um, we assimilate the people who've come here in whatever way and make sure that they become a part of the country, that they become taxpayers, that people are working, that there's not such heavy welfare going on right now, and that people are active members of society really pursuing what the point of this country is, which is you can do whatever you want, you have that freedom to grow as long as you don't hurt others. So I do believe immigration should be suspended, but it's not against people because of their ethnicity. It's because our country is overwhelmed and a third of our population is out of work. That's not, that, that puts so much pressure, especially when that other two thirds that is working in some kind of a dynamic, so many of them are not making that much money. And when they start to raise interest rates, they're going to skyrocket and inflation is going to cause a lot of people who have homes and variable rates to lose their homes because their payments are right now like four or 500. If the, the interest rates jump, you're gonna see their bills being like 1200 versus 400 in a matter of maybe two years. And you're gonna see a lot of recession hit again. It's gonna be pretty bad for our country and more people coming in it's just going to make it that much harder on us. So we need to stop now, freeze now, and let everybody become associated and start to coexist together. So here's quick today's answer because of this. This <clears throat> the person is Amerigo Vespucci. He was the uh, discoverer who found that out. Um, we remember him today because the United States of America, America itself, is a derivative of the Latin word Amerigus, which uh, goes back to Amerigo's first name. So he is actually very clearly remembered within our history by that. Uh, it's almost a bow to him. So many people think it was Columbus or even, um, what was his name? I can't remember what his original name was. Uh, there was another voyager, um, um, the, the name escapes me right now, but there was another voyager who has actually been attributed with finding the United States, or what we call America now. But remember, America was originally 13 colony, colonies along the Atlantic border. That's where it started, and then it grew out from there to what we know today. It didn't just start with we had all this area. It started along the Atlantic, Atlantic, uh, Atlantic Ocean coast, and the, in that area, and and just grew out from 13 colonies. That's why the original flag had 13 stars on it in a circle. All right, so thanks so much for watching. <sighs> Hope you got some cardio in. I'm glad I got to do this with you. Thanks so much for being there and uh, tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, like, uh, leave a comment, and hey, help us out. Share the video. Get more people involved. Tell your friends. Why not? Hey. If you don't want to share, 
video, you know, rewards with your friends. I don't know, man. You might as well help your friends out. Eventually it grows, and if they find out without you and telling them, then they're like, why didn't you tell me about that before? Help your friends now. Tell them about it. All right, thanks so much. Be well. Have a wonderful day.